Imagine a park where the three big thrill coasters all have names with the phrase "the ride" in them. You've got the ride to happiness, Haiti the ride, and of course the ride we're reviewing today, Anubis the ride. Now Anubis is the original launch coaster at Plopsaland, Japan. It used to be their prime thrill machine, you know, the big ride that stood out from the family rides in the park until the ride to happiness took its spotlight. But if you still want to launch without spinning, then this is your guy. People tend to be pretty impressed by this ride as well, and the launch is especially gets a bunch of praise and I mean this ride definitely deserves it. It's a very powerful ride, that launch is insane, we'll of course get all into that in this review but as the first thing as always we're gonna get into the technical stuff of this coaster that I rode in July of 2022. But it's weird that it happened twice right? So Anubis is a Gerslauer launch coaster, only two of this model were ever made and this was the last one of the two. It's the 600 layout as well which is almost identical to the daredevil dive layout on the Eurofighter at Six Flags over Georgia. Now Daredevil Dive was made later on and that is of course a Eurofighter with a vertical lift hill and a beyond vertical drop whereas Anubis has a launch and a top hat instead but other than that the layouts are completely the same but as I said Anubis over before it was from 2009 which is one year after the other Gerslauer launch coaster and what these rides have in common is that they both feature these weird six rider cars with three rows where the rows get further apart the further back you go. They're basically like Eurofighter the cars except their six seaters and only this one the other launch coaster Lunet and then the Eurofighter Huracan have these trains the ones on Daredevil Dive are built slightly different and they have lap bars as well what I'm built different. Whereas these one have the completely normal Gerslauer hydraulic over the shoulder restraints. And you sit pretty tight and the restraints are fine as well. Head banging is not uncommon with these type of restraints and they're not the most comfortable, especially if you're a larger person. I am of course a hobbit, so I'm fine. But yeah, you sit pretty tight and kind of oddly in these trains. Now Anubis is 111 and a half feet tall, which makes it the tallest coaster in the park. Yes, it's taller than Ride to Happiness. It's also 1,968 and a half feet long, which is a pretty short length for a thrill coaster, but it does mark this coaster as a short but sweet experience. And it goes 55.9 miles an hour, which also makes it the fastest in the park along with the Ride to Happiness. The ride duration of Anubis is 45 seconds from when it leaves the station until the final brake run. And that's a fine length. It is not a short coaster at all. It doesn't feel short either, but it definitely doesn't feel long either. It feels like a very mid, slightly shorter experience, but it packs a punch all the way through, which makes it more worth it all the way. And through that layout, it also has three inversions, although it's kind of debatable how many inversions it has due to the Immelman, but we'll get to that later. Anubis looks really, really good. First of all, I love the track color. It's this great cyan-ish blue that is sort of darker and very pretty. Mama! Oh! Wow. And when you mix that color and generally the structure of the ride with the wooded area, it is great. Essentially, Anubis layout is in this pocket of woods where there is this little porch for viewing the layout where you can basically see almost all of it except the launch. This is a great point to stand and look at the ride. And because it's surrounded in this pocket of trees, it just looks even more scenic and gorgeous. So the presentation is really cool. The presentation from the entrance is also great because you look at this house, which is very intriguing and invites you in. It's a pretty cool sensation also because because you can't see the layout from this angle. You just see the house and are like, all right, let's go explore. And finally, the Egyptian style trains look fire. They're golden with great detail and they just look really, really cool. I love these trains. So generally Anubis looks really good and really cool. The layout of Anubis starts out with a small curved drop that gets you into the LSM launch because typically launches from Gerslauer tend to be rolling launches. They see me rolling. But that doesn't diminish the power of this launch at all. Anubis has an insanely powerful LSM launch. <laughs> it is the second most powerful one I've felt after Flug van Novgorod. It's a very short launch that gets you up to the top speed of 55.9 miles an hour pretty fucking quickly. <laughs> These Gerslauer LSM launches are instant. There's no curve at all. You just get slammed to the back of your seat and you feel a bunch of power and it's awesome. After that, you then shoot vertically up into this top hat at the bottom of which you'll experience some pretty awesome positive forces before you then get ejector airtime at the top. Now this ejector airtime is pretty funny because it kind of translates into floater the further into the top hat you go. So it starts off as ejector and then you sort of get floater and flojector when you go down from the top hat. But 
but you stay out of your seat the entire way through. And while of course also twisting down, because it twists so much to the right, you also get a jolt of laterals that are also awesome. Then in this valley, you also get a solid dose of positive forces, and then you head into the dive loop. And Gerslauer dive loops are pretty cool. You start out with a pretty good whip that really yanks you to the side and pops you out of your seat before you slam into the half loop portion of the inversion, where you get a strong dose of positive forces all the way through. And yeah, this is my favorite inversion on the ride for sure. Then you head into the second top hat, sort of. I'm saying top hat in quotation marks because it's called a top hat, but let's be real, it's not really. You're a phony! Because it twists up and then it goes straight and flattens out and then it twists down. It's a great element though, anyway. You get some pretty strong laterals when you go into it, while also getting some great strong floater airtime that sort of flattens out at the top before you then get the strong floater and strong laterals again when you head down. It's a very weird feeling element, but I quite like it. It's really fun. Then you head into the inclined Immelman loop slash junior Immelman. This is the controversial inversion on the ride because when you look at it from an actual angle of being upside down, it's not over 135 degrees, meaning that this is technically not an inversion, depending on whose logic you follow, of course. According to my own logic, this is a junior Immelman. This is not an inversion. Yes, but actually no. But I gotta be real with you guys, it feels like an inversion. It's marketed and presented as an inversion, so I'm hypocritical here as fuck, and I still count it as an inversion. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I count this as an inclined Immelman loop. And you start out with some pretty hefty positive forces when you head into the Immelman, before then sort of floating out of it, but you don't really get any real floater or laterals going out of it. It's really just the positive forces that shine here. But at the bottom of this valley, when you go up into the mid-course break run, you do get some pretty good positive forces again, and when you head up into the mid-course, you also get a burst of laterals heading into it. This turn out of the mid-course also gives a sustained dose of laterals toward your right side, all the way through the drop before you then get a very quick pop of positive forces at the bottom. Then you head into the banged bunny hill, which is pretty odd. <laughs> This is just an elongated banged bunny hill and it doesn't do anything. There are no laterals or no floater or anything on this element. It's easily the most useless element on the ride. But you do get a positive heavy turn right after, before then having the hardline roll, which is very hang timey. This inversion basically completes the set of forces that this ride can offer. Because the hang time is very good, it's sustained, you're very much out of your seat, and then you head into the small, slightly lateral fill turn into the final brake run. And that is essentially the layout of Anubis the ride. A final thing I want to mention before talking about the pacing of this ride is how much the shaping just screams classic Gerslauer. Everything from the curves to the inversions and of course the OP magnetic launch all are insanely Gerslauer like. You don't see shaping or execution like this from any other manufacturer. Now, say my name. And generally, Anubis layout just packs a punch. As you can hear, pretty much every valley brings positive forces. There are a ton of lateral moments. And while there's definitely a minimal dose of airtime and hang time, it's certainly still there and provided that all sorts of different strengths. So Anubis has an incredibly completed layout. <laughs> The pacing of Anubis the ride is also very solid. Now apart from the mid-course brake run and especially the elongated banked hill, it powers all the way through. Anubis is a powerhouse and it carries without missing a beat most of the time. Now for the pacing itself, I don't really think that the mid-course brake run does it any harm. It's such a fast mid-course and it has a great entrance and especially a great exit. So for me, it does not disrupt the pacing. Generally, Anubis just feels like a fast ride that again, powers all the way through. <laughs> Oh shit. The only thing I would say is a proper break in pacing though is the bank bunny hill. It feels like a really awkward little break. You feel like you slow down, there are no forces really. Because other than this element, the ride is a full throttle machine. So this element is just cringe. It's a very small part though because the pacing is generally really great and something just keeps happening during the ride. Fuck this hill. But otherwise, I really can't not complain about the pacing. I'm gonna kick your ass. Now, Anubis is definitely not a smooth coaster, but it's not overly rough either. It's basically typical old Gerslauer. That's what this ride feels like. So it is quite rattly, and it certainly has a few moments of proper roughness and headbanging as well. But most of it is pretty manageable. You don't really get hurt on this ride necessarily. There's only one point that actually bothers me regarding the smoothness, and that's the rise into the top hat, and that rise is pretty brutal. 
This moment is a proper shaker, and you can get a small headache early on from this moment, and that's what happened to me in my rides. So this moment definitely bothered me, but I was still able to enjoy the rest of the ride just fine, even though I got a small headache from it. Of the two versions of the Gerslauer launch model, Lunel is definitely a smoother ride, Anubis throws you and shakes you around more, but it's still not a problem. I forgive you. I mean, Anubis is still unfathomably smooth compared to like an SLC or something, so no worries. And it's not the worst headache breaker in the park either. I'd say that Ride to Happiness Rattle is worse than the roughness on Anubis. Yeah, I said it. Yeah! But don't expect a smooth ride on Anubis, but also don't expect, you know, a deal breaker necessarily. Anubis the Ride is themed to this Dutch-Belgian TV series, Gertrude Anubis, I'm probably pronouncing that very wrong. But it means the House of Anubis in Dutch. The show features elements from Egyptian mythology, hence the name of Anubis and the look of the cars. And the station itself is the house from the series, the House of Anubis. And as I mentioned previously, it looks great. It has some awesome details, foliage, everything. It's one of my favorite stations out there from an outside perspective. It looks very inviting, it looks beautiful, and it looks like it just belongs. Inside it's also very well decorated. There are plenty of things and details to look at throughout the queue line, and it truly feels like an actual mansion in many parts. My god, this house is freaking sweet. I truly love all the little things, and it's such a completed theme throughout the house. The station platform is also decent. It's not super detailed, but it's covered. And the rest of the ride, i.e. the layout, does not feature any theming really. But it's fine since the foliage is so great. It feels like the garden of the house essentially. And I would definitely say it's one of the best themed rides in the park. I really really enjoyed Anubis theming. Generally the theming is great. Because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. Overall, Anubis just packs a really good punch. This is a powerful attraction with something constantly thrown at you. Whether it be the elements of the ride, or the parts of the theming in the queue line, Anubis is a complete coaster. That is a great thrill ride. It's a fantastic launch coaster. It's a great looping coaster. It delivers pretty much any force. I do have a personal problem with its roughness, as it does give me a headache early on in the ride. That one pothole is a serious bummer. But it doesn't take away from the overall fun that Anubis is, which is why I still think Anubis deserves a 9 out of 10. It's an incredibly well rounded thrill coaster, and it's a perfect supporter for the ride to happiness, as well as a good warm up for it as well. It seems like most enthusiasts also see this as the park's second best ride. Whether I do that is something my future ranking will tell when I've finally gotten around to reviewing Haiti the Ride, which will come at some point. You're going nowhere! But yeah, if you come here, definitely give Anubis a shot because this is an awesome coaster. Otherwise, I would love to hear what you guys think about this ride or Daredevil Die for that matter. Let me know what you think about that layout or if you've ridden Luna or any ride that's just similar to Anubis. Let me know what you think. Give me your perspective, boys. Otherwise, bye!